Hi guys. Hmm? Did you see what Santa brought to me? A mini late. <laughs> That's my Christmas gift. Okay. Uh, this is not the best setup here, so I'm gonna move uh, a little bit of things around and I'm gonna give you a closer look to everything here, what I've got. Alright, so like I said, Merry Christmas to me. This is a Christmas gift from myself to myself. And as I said before in one of my previous videos, I was dreaming about a late for a very long time and finally I got the chance to get one and it is uh, a really nice gift to myself so it is a mini late obviously it's a mini mini late it's a 7x8 craftex 7 inches refer to the diameter of a work that you can turn on the spindle and 8 inches refers to the distance between the spindles here and mini lathes can be uh, 8, 10, 12, 14 and 16 I think this one in this case is the smallest one but what I need it for though doesn't require too much of a distance here and what I need it for is to play with it <laughs> I don't really need it for any particular job or anything but I just want to have it and probably I'm gonna find some use for it but mostly I got it so I can play with it and I'm really happy it has a 3 inch uh, 3 jaw chuck or, but I just got a 4 jaw chuck too because uh, there is some difference between the 3 jaw and 4 jaw. The main difference is that the 3 jaw chuck is self-centered, which means that the 3 jaws move at the same time and it's also referred to as uh, universal, 3 inch, 3 jaw universal chuck. And the 4 jaw has uh, 4 independent jaws that you can adjust separately and there you can uh, hold work like with different shape it can be oval or square or rectangular and uh, by adjusting the separate jaws you can hold different types of work here so it's good to have three jaw because it's nice and quick to change it you don't need to uh, waste too much time to mount your work on the on the chuck but it's also not very accurate and uh, we can talk about that some other time I guess but uh, the four jaw chuck is harder to install the work on but it can be very precise and it is uh, like I said it's convenient to hold different types of uh, stock here so anyways let me show you what else came with it so obviously I got it used and it came with some other parts and uh, tools here including some books the amateur slate work holding in the late sheet metal how to work sheet metal well, this book I can write. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. And workshop practice. Nice little books. And uh, those who came with a set of uh, indexable carbide tools. And two of them are already installed on the lathe. And um, what else? I don't really know what is that. This is a blank 3 8 uh, high speed steel blank that you can grind to uh, any shape that you want for your work and I don't really know what is this Groves center square eh, one and a half inch 38 millimeters not really sure how to use that and what to use it for but I guess I will figure it out eventually so that's here the allen keys that I need for the chuck and for various parts of the lathe a center drill just one uh, and this is a center, uh, dead center, but this is not for the tailstock, this is for the headstock actually because it, it is Morris Taper 3 which matches the spindle taper. But I also have this life center which turns and it is with Morris Taper 2 which matches the tailstock taper so I can do work between centers if I want to. Uh, what else? I have the I have a little chuck here, I think this one is quarter inch. This is quarter inch, it, it can hold drills, uh, drill bits up to quarter inch, but I also got a half inch now. This also has a Morris Taper 2, which matches the tailstock. And of course the key for the chuck, the key for the uh, drill chuck at the back, and some reverse jaws for the three jaw chuck and all the gears for changing the 
pitch of the power feed uh, screw and other than that a full box of different uh, brass and uh, aluminum stocks and different shapes and plates and rods and stuff like that I can use one of these I can use for my welding for a back plate for my welding I can use if I want to so yeah all these came together with the lathe and I haven't had too much time to play with it but I already tested it to see what I can do with it because I'm, I've never touched a lathe before in my life I watched thousands of videos so now I know this and that and I know what uh, how to approach it and what to do but I've never done it before so now I wanted to test the lathe and to test my skills as well so I did this out of an old boat just not a not, not a specific shape or anything, just decided to do something. Uh, I turned this and uh, made thread inside, so that's nice. And I also, if you see on my screen here, I was just playing with uh, a piece of uh, aluminum and just by chance I made something that looks like this uh, Le Mans style. Uh, nuts for valve covers and I figured that I can start doing these now so very quickly I made one and it looks pretty much okay <laughs> but uh, yeah I just I don't have a knurling tool I ordered one so it's gonna come eventually but uh, yeah it is I already started having fun with it so like I said I already started having fun with it started playing a little bit but before I get too far with the playing, I think I will have to do some maintenance here because uh, while I was doing those uh, little things, I realized that uh, there are some issues here with the, especially with the carriage, not actually not with the actual carriage, but with the cross light and with the compound. Like you see, there's this huge amount of play here, which is unacceptable for uh, high precision tool and even though it is a mini lathe it is really precise tool and you can uh, do very fine work within uh, one thousandth of an inch uh, tolerances but you see this is unacceptable to have such amount of play in this direction also the whole cross slide has a little bit of a play here and I was watching a lot of videos and I have an idea what to do, how to adjust this uh, and uh, mainly I was watching videos of uh, Frank Hoos he's a fantastic guy, about uh, 70 years old guy he has a lot of uh, knowledge about mini lathes and he shares it in his uh, channel so I'm gonna put the link to his channel in the description below and he has a series of videos uh, describing exactly how to adjust and how to play a little bit and how to make those uh, especially the cross light and the compound really tight and very very precise and without and avoiding any play but uh, yeah you see also there's a I don't know if you see that yeah there's a huge amount of backlash here I don't even want to measure how much but if you can see I can turn this uh, lever for about let me let me see actually so here we are at uh, zero thousands and I can turn it to 20 without affecting the cross light in any way so only after 20 it starts moving so we're gonna get rid of this backlash as well hopefully and we're gonna get rid of this play and also there is a very serious problem here this compound cannot be locked for some reason it doesn't lock if you can see here I put a piece of paper underneath to make it lock and it was locking it for a while but then it stopped locking it again and the way to lock this uh, compound is uh, actually I have to move you in a different location so I can show you so the way to lock this compound and in, into a specific angle that you want because if it's not locked when you approach the work the work pushes the tool and the tool pushes oops this is not tight and then the tool pushes the compound and changes the angle which is unacceptable for this so the way to lock it is you have to uh, pull it back almost all the way until the end of the screw underneath 
and then you have access to these two screws let me actually take this away we don't need it anymore so we're gonna have to take it anyway take it out anyways so here we have to be careful not to lose this uh, little uh, pin so the way to lock this is by tightening these two screws but what happens here is they're both all the way tight all the way I can't even tighten them anymore but this compound still turns so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna disassemble everything we're gonna see how it works we know I, I actually I watched videos so I know how it works and uh, we're gonna start building it from the bottom up by uh, piece by piece and adjusting all the lens so first of all we're gonna remove the compound here okay so we undid the screw from underneath and there's this gib strip which actually so the way to to adjust the play here this play that we had is with these three little screws here we can push this gib piece which has a diamond shape here you see and it goes into this dovetail uh, channel and you can uh, adjust how far it goes and how tight it is so it shouldn't be too tight so you can still turn it and crank it uh, back and forth but in the meantime it should keep it very tight so you don't have any play but that's what we're gonna do after we finish with uh, with everything else with, like I said we're gonna build it from the bottom up so to make it look what I did is uh, was I loosened these screws and I just put a piece of paper between the compound and the cross lead here and that worked for a while but of course that was just a temporary solution this piece of paper you know so okay so there's this plate or I don't know what should I call it which turns inside and it can go up and down and the way it works is very simple like it has a bigger flange underneath so when you tighten these screws this pulls up the plate and the flange underneath locks it to the uh, cross sled here so that's the way it works but unfortunately for some reason I'm guessing this pr protrudes a little bit too much hits the, the bottom of the compound and for some reason the flange doesn't hit the plate underneath so we're gonna have to figure this out as well these screws here they hold the nut which uh, this screw that I'm turning right now is going through and they also uh, can adjust the angle of this nut because it's like a cylinder and you can change the angle of this nut and that uh, makes this uh, run smoother or mm, not so smooth and also there are more uh, screws here on this side that can push uh, another gib strip here under this cross slide okay I'm gonna try to take this apart now so I'm gonna remove this lever as well and this washer shouldn't be on this side for some reason it's on this side but it needs to be on the other side of this lever so the lever comes out then this collar here is coming out and I know like I'm doing this for a first time I've never done that before but I watched so many videos that I know now that there must be a spring here inside that okay that I was supposed to catch and I didn't catch it but okay didn't go far so that's the spring which uh, makes this uh, collar tight to the screw so it can turn together with the screw but you're still able to uh, turn this if you want to hold the screw with the lever you can turn this uh, collar and zero the scale here so this, now there are two more screws inside here that we have to undo okay to be able to take this out because I want to take this plate out maybe I have to loosen this nut yeah that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna loosen the nut I'm gonna take the nut out so now I should be able to slide it out 
no? Still can't slide it out, maybe. Well, I can slide it backwards. But I have to remove the guard here. Okay, I'll have to remove the guard, so I'll bring you back. I remove the guard at the back, but before I take this apart, I just uh, remember that it's a good idea to figure out how much is the protrusion here. I can definitely, I can feel it with my finger that this plate protrudes above the surface of this uh, cross slide, which is actually, it, it needs to be the opposite. The plate should be at least a thousandth of an inch or a little, maybe more than a thousandth of an inch lower than this surface. So it can actually look. To measure this protrusion, I'm going to use my dial gauge here. I'm just going to lock it here. Okay, so it is at zero when it's on the plate, uh, when it's on the cross slide, and when it steps on this plate or whatever it is called. So it protrudes by three or four tau. I don't really see it. I need my glasses, guys. All right, so that's about three and a half tau, right? So it's not exactly at zero. Where is it? Okay, now it's exactly at zero. Oh, so it's four tau. Huh. I wonder why that is. Okay, let me go all the way on the other side as well. Just want to make it pass. And actually that's right now. This plate is not pulled by these screws, it's just sitting there. If these screws are tight, it might it's possible that it's gonna bring it even higher. So at least five tau. Wow, you see on this side. How come? Hmm. Shouldn't this plate be the same all the way? It is. Hmm, that's another issue. How is that possible? <laughs> Even this strip is not straight, you see? It varies by 3 to 4 tau from one side to the other. Hmm. I don't know, we will see about that later. Now, for me, the most important is to get rid of the play and to make this lock. So, we know that Okay, let me zero it here. So that's seven, almost seven tau lower. This needs to go at least seven tau lower. Okay, so now I can take it out, I hope. Just carefully not to lose the gip strip underneath. And that's the gip strip that I'm talking about. And this is the plate. So, for some reason, this flange is a little bit too low. So we need to change the distance between the, the flange and the top end of this plate by at least 10 tau. Or we need a 10 tau shim here on this flange. Maybe that's a way to do it. Maybe we can make a shim for here. But this means to take measurements now, then assemble the lathe, produce the shim out of something, I don't know what, and, uh, and then disassemble it again. Maybe that's what we should do. I just wonder, was that factory error or how did it happen? Alright, what I decided to do because to fix this plate I need a lathe. <laughs> so to fix my lathe I need a lathe. It's a catch-22, right? So uh, we'll see what I'm gonna do. Uh, maybe I'm gonna make a shim for here or I might make a completely new plate for here. I don't know what I'm gonna do but I need a lathe anyway. So um, I took precise me uh, measurements here with my micrometers and now I'm gonna assemble it 
I'm gonna do all the adjustments that I need to do and then uh, I will decide what to do. So with it. I already found use for my lathe. I can use it to fix my lathe. <laughs>